We begin with leading European Islamic scholar Tariq Ramadan, professor of contemporary Islamic studies at Oxford University, author of a number of influential books on Islam in the West, including Western Muslims and the Future of Islam, and In the Footsteps of the Prophet, Lessons from the Life of Muhammad. Ramadan was named by Time magazine as one of the most important innovators of the 21st century. He's joining us from Doha, Qatar. And here in New York is John Rick MacArthur, publisher of Harper's Magazine. In 2006, the magazine became one of the first U.S. publications to reprint the controversial Danish cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad that sparked international protests. Um, we begin with Tarek Ramadan. Uh, can you respond to what has taken place, the attack on the uh, magazine and what has ensued over these last hours? Uh, thank you first for giving me the, the, the time to respond to, to, to what we are listening to these days. And I think, as uh, I repeated, we have to condemn what is happening, and nothing can justify uh, uh, what happened and the killing of uh, uh, the cartoonists and, and, and now the police officer in France. Uh, what is important for us is to make it clear that we stand by our principles. And while I was uh, debating, you know, the journalists in France about the cartoons and the way they were uh, coming to uh, uh, nurturing controversies about, you know, insulting the, uh, the, 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 the prophet, insulting Islam. I made it clear from the beginning, this is your freedom to do so. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's, uh, it's uh, uh, an intelligent and decent way to, to deal with freedom of expression, but you need to be protected as to, to your right to do it. And I said to the Muslims, uh, by the way, in the States as well as everywhere, even in the Muslim-majority countries, that that we need to get it right, that uh, we are not going to convince our fellow human beings or fellow citizens uh, that we are a religion of dignity and, and freedom and responsibility if we start by censorship. That's not the way it has to be, neither in the West nor in Muslim-majority countries. Now, the point is that we stick to our principles, and there is a second principle that I want to make it make clear, uh, make it clear about here. It's really for all of us. While we are shocked by what is happening in the West and the killing of. Uh, of uh, uh, cartoonists or uh, innocent people, we should stand also by the same principles when it comes to things that are happening around the world in Muslim majority countries, because the most uh, uh, important you know, number of victims uh, uh, of violent extremism are Muslims in Muslim majority countries. And very often we are, you know, you have a government saying we are not counting uh, bodies where they are dropping, you know, bombs on people, and then we are shocked by other things. So I think that our principles also should be we stick to our principle, innocence in innocence, and the dignity of any life, it's the same dignity and there is no difference. And then the third thing that uh, I, I would add to this now is that we have to come together in the, in the West as Western citizens and understand that uh, the, the, it's not a Muslim business. We are not talking here about, you know, these are murderers and, and it's only Islam that is, has, or Muslims who have to talk about this. We have to come together to understand that we have a common enemy, uh, which is, uh, of course, violent extremism and all the reasons and causes that are uh, upstream uh, nurturing this when it comes to supporting dictators, not giving the freedom to, uh, for the people to find their, their way in the future. We need to be consistent as to our condemnation of the consequences and our analysis of the, the causes and the principles we stand for. Uh, Rick McArthur, you're the uh, publisher of Harper's, and Harper's magazine made the decision. It was one of the first publications to publish um, excerpts of Salman Rushdie's uh, satanic verses, and then also published, uh, perhaps more controversially, uh, the cartoons uh, from the Danish uh, newspaper uh, Jyllands Posten in 2006. And now, so could you respond to uh, what's happened now and how you feel this ought to be dealt with, this issue of freedom of speech versus what some construe as hate speech. Well, this is a long-term fight. This goes on for centuries. Remember, uh, we did this with Rushdie. We excerpted the satanic verses. We took the heat. We, we led the counterattack, actually, uh, after the fatwa was declared. And we've been fighting this for a long time at Harper's. We're not alone, but it's always a beleaguered 
minority that fights for freedom of expression, unfortunately. And you hear in the responses to a lot of well-meaning, by a lot of well-meaning well people uh, in the aftermath of this horrible, horrible murder, uh, these qualifications. Well, we, we agree with uh, the right to do it, but we disagree with the way it was done. And as Art is going to say, I think, more articulately than I can later, uh, the provocation itself is part of the discussion. And if you can't have provocation, you can't have an authentic discussion. And the reason we published the images was so that Art Spiegelman could critique them uh, in front of an audience uh, uh, to explicate them and to give people a chance to draw their own conclusions in an intelligent way. If you can't show the images, you can't have the critique, you can't have the discussion. So I'm a little uneasy with the response of some of my well-meaning, liberal-minded colleagues who are condemning the killings, who are at the same time saying, well, but I wouldn't have done it that way. Well, how else could you do it? The New York Times today, uh, in their main story, reproduced two images, two cover images from Charlie Hebdo, neither of which was uh, one of the ones that offended the Muslims. Now, the second point I want to make, which is essential, is that to say, to back off and to say, we don't want to offend Muslim sensibilities is to generalize to the point of caricature of Muslims, as if all Muslims agreed that this was offensive or offensive enough to merit murdering people, uh, when, in fact, a vast, the vast majority of Muslims disapprove of this, think it's the wrong thing to do, think it's the wrong response, as did a lot of Iranians at the time of uh, the Rushdie crisis. I know a lot of Iranians. I'm very close to the Iranian world. And so I, I am I'm troubled by the, by the response, and I feel reinforced when I talk to my friends like Art and the people who, who, who fight, fight for these kinds of things over the long haul. <clears throat> Tarek Ramadan, you, when we spoke yesterday, just as all this news was breaking, you said you knew, is that right, the editor-in-chief of Charlie Hebdo? Yes, yes. I knew him and I debated him in, in, I think, two TV programs in France. And we were disagreeing. You know, I, I he think was that, one of those uh, killed. Yes. And I think I'm sad about this. And I, I once again, uh, you know, straight away, I send my sympathy to the, 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 the victim uh, families. And I think that this is something which is unacceptable. Uh, now, once again, I think that uh, uh, the, the freedom of expression and, and the way we are dealing with this, it's, it's a serious matter. And we cannot just uh, in any way justify what was done. And, and my, my own take, you know, I was one of the first uh, in the West taking a position by saying the fatwa against Salman Rushdie is a political fatwa, is not a religious fatwa. I'm not supporting this. And I, I think that really we have to come to, to this understanding. And by the way, if you look at the Western Muslims uh, today, the great, great, great majority of the Muslims today are quite clear on this. They are not supporting in any way, even censorship. They are not going that way. So there is a trend uh, which is very important now. What is uh, uh, problematic is that sometimes uh, in even the statesmen, uh, some of the people who are living in the West, they don't know uh, the impact in, uh, of what they are saying, not on Western Muslims only, but on Muslims around the world that are now using the frustration of some Western Muslims, in fact, to instrumentalize Islam by saying, look, at the end of the day, make it as you want, be whoever you want, try to be invisible in the West, you are targeted by people. So I think that uh, we should be very clear on even the double standards, that there are things that you can say about Muslims today that you cannot say about Jews. Let it be clear what we can say about Jews, which is anti-Semitism. It's completely wrong. Islamophobia is wrong. Don't have these double standards and just target the weak people. And this is why I said to the chief editor of Charlie Hebdo, what you are doing is, you know, in French, I said, this is the humor of the, 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 the people who have no courage. You have, you have a lack of courage in the way you are dealing because you know who you are targeting. So my point is not your freedom of expression is the freedom that you have to target the people who are weak within your society. And I don't think that this is the right way of using your, your freedom of expression. 
Now you have the right to say whatever you, you, you want to say. Principles are principles, but decency and responsibility are also important in this discussion. Well, Rick McCarthy. Yeah, well, the important thing to remind you, again, is that, well, I didn't say it at first, was that in Art Spiegelman's essay in Harper's Magazine, we made a point of including anti-Semitic caricatures, anti-Semitic uh, uh, imagery, so that Art could make the point that this all depends on whose ox is being gored. And he takes the position uncomfortably as a Jew who's written uh, brilliantly about the Holocaust and, and about speak Auschwitz. For himself in one moment. He speak for himself. Uh, that that uh, that you know we're Catholic in this in our approach to this. We're open minded and we understand that as journalists and as writers and as critics, we have to be able to take the worst offense ourselves. Uh, in order to be able to justify on principle offenses committed against other people. My example is always the Nazis marching in Skokie, which to me is vastly worse, uh, more offensive to my sensibilities than, than these caricatures of, of the prophet. Uh, but I stood up and so did a lot of other people for the right of free expression so that the Nazis would be permitted to march in Skokie, which is a, a, a place where a lot of Holocaust survivors live. That's how uh, seriously people like Art and I take freedom but, of expression. But can I ask you a question about that? If you look at the situation in the West, really now, if you are a, you know, a citizen, as I am a citizen, when you speak here about equal citizenship and equal rights for each, can you can you feel the fact that there is a double standard, that there are things that we can say in the West and things that we cannot say? And for example, this is also part of the frustration. It's as if today, whatever you want to say about Muslims, you can say it. Once again, I come to the principles. I would be the first to defend this right to say whatever you want to say. But the reaction, the emotional reaction is a selective reaction. And it's not the same depending on what you are talking about. You are very, if, if you are targeted as anti-Semitic, it's, it's, it's over for you. But when you are having Islamophobic statements, that's fine. That's the normalization of this discourse. And the problem is that it's not only coming from the far-right parties. The problem that I have in the West now, uh, wherever you are, look at the demonstrations that we had in Germany recently, is the normalization in the political discourse of Islamophobic statements. So don't you feel that there is a double standard? Don't you feel that we are talking about freedom of expression, targeting the Muslims more than others? This is at least the fear feeling of Western Muslims, and you cannot just drop it and, and dismiss it as if it's not existing. Well, I'm uncomfortable with the expression, the feeling of Western Muslims, because, again, I fear generalization as opposed to what specific Muslims are saying, what specific newspapers are saying. I'm yeah, yes, about of course, yes, but of course there are double standards. But, but of course there are double standards and uh, uh, all over the place. But that doesn't change the point that I'm trying to make, which is that we should be striving to defend the most extreme examples of satire and provocation as a matter of principle and not uh, apply double standard. Of course, as I said, I was more offended. I'm more offended by Nazis marching in Skokie than I am by the Prophet Muhammad being satirized in Charlie Hebdo. But it doesn't change my uh, commitment to defending both uh, uh, both forms of provocation as a matter of principle. It doesn't mean I approve of them. And I'm just nervous about people starting to, to back and fill and say, look, uh, if you had just done it in a nicer way, it would have been acceptable or a less offensive way. Well, how do you, how do yes, you, how you, how you address you, you, these questions? You, you can't. You know, at, at, the, at, the, at the end of the day, I agree with, with you on, on, on the principles. Now, we are living in pluralistic societies, and you cannot just, in, you, I, I understand your point, you cannot generalize on feeling, and you are yeah. right. But still, if you see the only, sta just the statements that you made right now, saying, of course, there are double standards. That's the of course of it, which is problematic. That this is what we have to stand together. It's not, we are not going to live together only by principles and rights. We also have to deal with, uh, uh, you know, uh, feeling, sense of belonging. And this has to be built on in a, a, a responsible way. 
I don't think it just, oh, give me my rights. I, I, I should be able to say whatever I say. You know, you have sometimes the right to say silly things, but silly things in time of controversies, of tensions, are uh, uh, idiotic. It's, it's not the way forward. So I would say, uh, uh, yes, the right of freedom of expression, but one of the, 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 the right of freedom of expression should all be, also be the, the responsible way of using it. If I and, could... and it's not, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's about human dignity. It's about living together. If I could just quickly interrupt you, because I, I uh, to say at the end that there's a political question here which we're not dealing with, which I keep trying to deal with, while separating it from the principle of freedom of expression, and that is yes, there's a huge Western, violent Western presence in the Middle East and in the Arab world that didn't exist 25 years ago, uh, when we sent troops to Saudi Arabia uh, uh, before the first Gulf War. We tore something uh, in the Muslim world. We outraged people. But this is a political question that you should also be talking about. The American army sending troops to, to uh, uh, holy soil in Saudi Arabia is a different issue and a different propagation from a French magazine publishing satires of the Prophet Muhammad. And if people don't begin to look into, make the connections or discuss the, the political context, of the, of the Western presence in the Middle East, the military presence, I think we're going to have a hard time getting around this, um, I, this roadblock. I, 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 really, I really agree with you on this. I, I think that this is essential. It's essential for us as Westerners, and, and Western Muslims should, should be involved in this discussion. We cannot cut this discussion from the big picture. And the big picture is, yes, the way, for example, our Western governments are dealing with dictatorships, are dealing with uh, uh, Gulf states. And and, and by being silent about freedom, about dignity, and even supporting regimes where there is no freedom of expression. And, and this is the right point to make, but this is part of the whole discussion. And you and me, as Westerners, or from the United States, as well as from Europe, we have to be clear, we are not going to defeat anything which has to do with violent extremism if we are not dealing with justice, with freedom for the people, with uh, the real uh, uh, reform, uh, remote for reformist approach in the Muslim majority countries. And what is happening today is exactly the opposite. We have the West supporting the worst dictatorships and coming to us as Western Muslims say, okay, now apologize for the consequences of what is happening. So we should stand to principles, but we cannot uh, uh, avoid talking about the big picture and the political one is essential. We have to leave. Yeah. Um, and also uh, Rick MacArthur will be leaving us. Rick MacArthur is publisher of Harper's Magazine, um, uh, author of Second Front Censorship and Propaganda in the Gulf War, uh, published the uh, the Danish uh, cartoons as well as uh, the excerpts of Satanic Verses when a fatwa was issued against Salman Rushdie. But he will be replaced by the man he in, um, invoked, uh, Art Spiegelman, the famed Pulitzer Prize-winning uh, cartoonist, editor, comics advocate, uh, best known for his graphic novel, Mouse. Uh, we will also be joined. Um, uh, by Joubert Ashkar, uh, the professor at the School of Oriental and African Studies at the University of London, and Tariq Ramadan will stay with us. This is Democracy Now! We're back in a minute.